Hey, Sassy fam. Welcome to the first ever episode of a brand new segment I'm calling Extra Sassy. Extra Sassy is my attempt to, at long last, finally answer some of those frequently asked questions and comments that I receive on a daily basis. Everything from what is it like to practice tarot professionally, to having a full-time YouTube channel, and then also questions I receive about my personal self and home life. All that stuff. Fun, light, topical, right? So that's what extra sassy is going to be about. But for this first episode, there could only be one topic of conversation. The number one question I receive multiple times a day, every day. Christina, please list all your tarot decks, review them, tell us about them, and then also P.S. Link them off in case we want to purchase them as well. Thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is that day. We're going to go over the commonly used tarot decks and oracles that I use on this channel and that you see more often than not. The reason I haven't done it before, you guys, is that when you ask me, right, to show you my tarot decks, you don't, you don't see <laughs> the collection. <laughs> there are actually bookcases just out of your sight on my left and right that are full. <laughs> that are full of tarot decks and oracle cards and things like that. I have a fairly extensive collection because I've been doing this for a long time. So it's not just my profession, it's also a hobby. So for those folks who have ever asked me, have you ever worked with XYZ deck or can I send you XYZ deck? The answer is probably yes, and please don't. There's a good chance I already have XYZ deck. So like I said, I, I really had to pick and choose today about what we're going to focus on, and the answer could only be those tarot decks that you're used to seeing on this channel. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to an overhead shot because the tarot decks today are the star of the show. We're going to highlight their pros, their cons, why I use them, why they're my go-to at all. That's cinnamon. Um, why they're my go-to at all, uh, what you can expect from them, okay? And then also if they're still available for purchase, I will link them off below as well. While I'm thinking about it, guys, um, while we're on the subject of new segments, Extra Sassy and upcoming Dear Sassy, this is all going to be unscheduled content, um, stuff that I can create on my time when I have the time, okay? So just to let you know, these message types, these video types will not be scheduled on a regular basis, okay? As much as I would like to, um, being a full-time content creator, it requires a kind of a sacrifice of personal time, <laughs> okay? All right, you guys, I will see you at the Tarot Dex. Let's talk about decks, and I have a lot of decks. Shiny decks, colorful decks, small decks, big decks, hard decks, soft decks, and specialty decks. I have all the decks. What I'm showing you today are those decks that get the job done and done well. I know every inch of my decks. In fact, in future, I anticipate to do an anti-deck haul review. Oh yes, those decks I had purchased and wished I had not, you know, we thought those decks were special at the time, but uh, with enough exposure, turns out it was just good packaging. We all fall for a deck from time to time that we wished we hadn't. It happens, and I want you to know about those decks. But for now, let's talk about the ones that you might incorporate into your own particular collection. I hope that this review serves you, although I will point out I am not a professional reviewer. I am, however, a professional tarot deck user with decades of real experience, and I'm going to tell you why these decks we're looking at today work for me and are my go-to for you too. All right, Sassy fam, let's go ahead and jump into the number one tarot deck I get the most requests for in terms of what is it called and where can I find it. That would be, of course, the Gold Foil Tarot. It is indeed a beautiful deck. It is very eye-catching, which was one of the reasons why I use it so much on camera. It is very, very visible. And not only is it very, very shiny, it's also holographic. Yeah, beautiful. It comes in a variety of colors. Of course, we see the yellow gold. It also is available in antique, like so. Beautiful deck. It even has texture, too. For those people who appreciate the tactile experience of tarot decks. Personally and professionally, 
I would rate this deck as being pro level. You don't want to start learning how to shuffle with this deck. I promise you they will fly out of your hands, and I'll tell you why. One of the unique features to this particular tarot deck is its high gloss coating on both sides. That is what allows for its rapid shuffling, okay? So for those folks who are just beginning, I promise you, this is not the deck to practice with. <laughs> That's why it's pro. You'll see for yourself. Check this out. See that? Okay. This is not your standard card. It does not easily crease, and it snaps back. Okay. And again, another reason why I use it, because as an experienced shuffler and practitioner, I put a lot of known distributed pressure on the cards. I'm very aware of how I shuffle, right? And that being said, having something that can consistently live up to the repetition of that shuffle is paramount to what I do, okay? Uh, which means I have to replace this particular type of deck not nearly as often or as frequently as the other traditional paper-based tarot decks, yeah? So this is, again, a fantastic deck. I highly recommend it if you're at the pro level and you appreciate rapid, consistent, pressurized shuffling. It holds up for a very long time. It will not bend permanently because once you create that crease in any card, it's pretty much ruined for good shuffling at that point. So this, thankfully, does not do that. I like it so much, and uh, I lean on it so heavily as a user um, that I actually have a backup gold, <laughs> just in case. Because eventually, that coating, even though it's really superior, is going to wear down eventually. They all do in the end. Okay. Which is why I have that backup, <laughs> just in case. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the gold foil. I believe it also comes in the color of silver. I do not have that one. Um, no, I'll take that back. I did have it, and I gave it away. I'll tell you why. The silver one is beautiful, but it's really for up-close work only. You can't see it very well um, on the distance that I shoot with my camera. Other than that, I would use it as well. <laughs> so that is the gold foil. Moving on to the Golden Universal Tarot. Very well-known deck. There's a good chance you have this one in your collection, too, and I don't blame you. And if you don't, perhaps you should. Let's show you why. First, this deck is good for all practitioner types, be you beginning, intermediate, or pro. It will serve you well. Okay? So, a big thing, guys, about paper-based tarot decks, which this one is, is do they wear down consistently? I have replaced this deck three times, not because it doesn't wear down consistently, but because it does. When you use your tarot decks as often as I do, they're eventually going to lose their coating. All tarot cards have some sort of coating on them. The gold foil has heavy, heavy coating on its outside. Okay, These, the paper-based ones, the more traditional cards, not so much. So if you use them as frequently as I do, they're going to wear down quickly. And the thing is, if your tarot deck is going to wear down, you want it to wear down consistently. That way you know when to replace it. Because your shuffling is not where you want it to be. You're having to put more and more pressure on the cards. It's taking more time for you to shuffle and feel confident about it. So it's important then that when you get one of these more traditional decks, that they wear down, like I said, evenly and consistently in a way that you can recognize it, that way you know when to replace it and it won't interfere with your shuffling, okay? Your shuffling method, especially when you work with client guys, I cannot emphasize that enough. You want to be confident with your tools when you're working with clients, all right? It's one thing when you use a well-worn deck for yourself. It's another thing when you're working with clients or you're presenting it on media like I do, okay? So something to think about. That being said, the Golden Universal, as well as the other ones I'm showing you today, have high levels of wear down consistency. Here's the back, a kind of filigree. This one has served me well over the years. I typically use it for clarification. Okay. 
And I've used it for baseline too. Overall, a really good standard deck. Moving on. Now this one. The Golden Art Novu Tarot. Very similar to the Golden Universal with a white border. Again, once more, a deck that wears down evenly because of practice skills. Mm -hmm. The master of our craft, yes? And the master of his craft knows his tools. And when those tools start to wear down or get dull, they're time to be replaced if they cannot be sharpened, you know? Once more, really excellent for working with clients or on camera. They've got that lovely pop. Good for all practitioner types. Beginner, intermediate, pro, you name it. Standard classic depictions. The back. And this one I've replaced, oh goodness, I want to say three times, and it's going to be time for a fourth soon. Do you see why? This is a Teradex version of uh, shelfware. <laughs> that is, of course, all the excess oils from my fingers. It adds up. And if you can believe it or not, and I hope you do, the oil and everything else from Basic Touch adds up and adds weight specifically to the deck. It makes it heavier and heavier. And it's one of the reasons, or you know, you should start preparing to replace it by its outer look, and then also when it starts to get that distinct U-bend shape right there in the middle. Okay? This one has started to slow down on me as the coating from all the touch and the shuffling. See? <laughs> They're not separating as well as they should. As the outer coating wears down, it shows. Okay? But it's an excellent deck in terms of consistent wear and being serviceable. Has a pretty good snapback, you know? But yeah, it's definitely at the point where I probably need to replace it. Pay attention to those decks you replace, guys. That means they have served you well. Okay? That is the Golden Art Novu. Next up, this Sanctus Concordia Tarot deck. Mm, now this one. This one's interesting. Every now and again, you pick up a, a deck and you take a chance on it. You don't know if you're going to like it or not. You have to literally start using it to figure it out. I wasn't sure if I was going to like this one at first. Excellent coating. Really good snapback. Okay. Really good. The reason why I was uncertain about it at first is because gilded edges. Now, gilded edges are absolutely beautiful. Okay? But here's the thing. Gilded edges add to the density, weight, and thickness of the card. And if it's not cut correctly, and I mean very finely, those gilded edges will get caught on each other and minimize the effectiveness of your own shuffling. So whenever you buy a deck that has gilded edges, you're kind of rolling the dice on that one. It's assuming that it was cut properly and neatly for them to separate and shuffle on each other the way they're supposed to. So this one, like most decks that have gilded edges, required breaking in, and it did. The point is, is that eventually it started to shuffle evenly, okay? And that's how you know if a gilded deck is going to be your friend or not. <laughs> you actually have to start breaking it in and working with it to see if it will start lining up correctly. Um, tarot decks that have gilded edges that are not cut properly or finely, the actual individual cards themselves will catch on each other and they will not shuffle very well. Okay, They'll constantly get caught on the same unevenly cut cards, which is unfortunate. 
because by then you will have understood it was a waste of money. This one, though, absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth it. I like this deck a great deal. Uh, it does deviate a little bit from the standard depictions, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, the more you move up as a practitioner, let's say you start getting into intermediate and pro practice, you're going to want to start working with decks that have different depictions, different slightly modified interpretations that still have the same or similar core value. Okay? So this is one that is good if you're intermediate or pro. But like I said, okay, it is going to require a lot of break and shuffling before it becomes serviceable to you. And just because it's gilded with gold does not mean you want to make that investment, guys. Remember that the back. All right. That is the Sanctus Concordia. Moving on. Well, now that we've moved on to the subject of specialty decks, let's talk about it. Uh, two of my favorite specialties over the years. I have replaced both of these about three times each. That's how heavily I rely on them. Um, two of my favorites. Let's jump into it. The Casanova Tarot and the Tarot Deck of Sexual Magic, respectively. Mm -hmm. uh, both of these and many, many more I have purchased from the company Lo Scadabeo. I apologize. I'm probably butchering the name. It's Italian. But yeah, they make a wonderful line of tarot decks. Um, with unique and different visuals and interpretations. Uh, so for that respect, even though they handle just like a regular tarot deck would, which would be good for any beginner, the interpretations really are for pros because guys don't move into specialty decks until you understand the basics. When you understand the basics, then you can take on those decks that have different meanings or, um, you know, new twists on old takes, that kind of thing. So let's let's take a look at Casanova here, one of my absolute favorites. It's very sentimental to me in non-traditional interpretations. This is one of those decks that obviously depicts nudity a little bit, you know, okay? As you see, that flirty, flirty Queen of Pentacles there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, but it is uh, it is one that I am very much attached to. This deck has a softer side, so good for the love readings, good for the romantic readings, and then, of course, also the intimate readings as well. Okay. That beautiful, saucy, sassy Queen of Cups in this deck. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, this definitely moves into the realm of specialty, special interpretations, that kind of thing. I'm going to insert a screenshot of some of the other decks I have um, by them that have served me well over the years. This one, like the other traditional paper-based tarot decks, it uh, has a well-done coating, okay, and wears down consistently, okay? But like I said, in terms of learning different interpretations and seeing things in a new way, this is really for those folks who have already mastered the basics of traditional tarot. All right? So that's the Casanova. Uh, of course, the Tarot Deck of Sexual Magic, a.k.a. Big Red. <laughs> this one, as you might imagine, I get asked about, oh, every day. Now, it is beautiful, absolutely. The center... The only real downside to this particular deck is a little paler than I care for. Um, obviously, it stands out for the reasons of the red border. You know? But uh, some very lovely meanings and interpretations. Ace of Pentacles. Okay. So in terms of reflection, think about the Ace of Pentacles from the traditional point of view and then add intimacy on that interpretation. Okay. And then you'll get an idea of why I use this deck for intimate tarot. But yes, this one also contains partial to full nudity in some places, okay? As you can see. Oh, look at that beautiful Ace of Cups. Very dreamy in this deck. Warm, inviting. Obviously, you can see why I use it for intimate tarot. Yeah, it's just softer. 
It's a faraway fantasy, you know. Nine of Pentacles, very different interpretation. <laughs> you know, it's beautiful stuff. Ah, that Six of Cups, make people sigh. <laughs> Comes up quite a bit. Beautiful soul bond energy there. Very indifferent interpretation of the Knight of Swords. <laughs> Six of Swords. Yeah, different meaning. As you can see on its face value, it does not look anything like a traditional Six of Swords. It doesn't look like anyone's trying to move on from anything or anybody there. <laughs> so like I said, for these kind of specialty decks, in order to understand and appreciate their meanings, you really need to master the basics or the fundamentals of tarot first. Okay? But yeah, I mean, that's that's big red, guys. I'm, I'm very partial to this one as well. Once more, wears evenly. Okay? So now we're going to move into the less frequently used but still makes an appearance category of tarot decks. This one, also very well known. The Earthrill Visions. I highly recommend this for your own particular collection. If you just say practice for yourself, I think you'll enjoy this deck quite a bit. The only reason I don't use it on camera more often is because it is very, very pale. Beautiful, though. Absolutely beautiful. Let's try this. Like I said, it's very pale. Okay. Once more... That ever popular gold pop, you know? Lovely, peaceful depictions. Even the devil looks calm. <laughs> it is a beautiful deck. Unfortunately, it's just so pale. People like to be able to see something that they recognize on camera, you know? And uh, I am one of those tarot readers that does both face as well as card shot. Um, personally, when I look at tarot readers, I want to be able to see their face, but I also want to be able to see the cards, which is why I have the combined effect that I do for my channel. Uh, but that also means sacrificing some of the quality of the close-up shots of the cards that you might otherwise get. And this one is just so lovely. It's so beautiful. And aside from that, being calm in terms of peaceful artistic depictions, okay, it is actually quite the perfect size for handling. Honestly, for me, for my hands, yeah, absolutely. I This has to be one of the most perfectly sized decks I've ever used. So it's just, it's a shame, really. I wish that there was more depth of color to kind of make it pop better. Because it everything about this deck is just fantastic, which is, again is one of the reasons why I strongly recommend it for your own personal use, if nothing else. It's good for all levels, be you a beginner, intermediate, or pro. Excellent, very calm, lovely deck to use for yourself, and then possibly one-to-one -one with a client. Okay. <laughs> okay. Consistent shuffling has a good bend, release, and snap back as well. Well known for its beautiful uh, color display. Very rich. It looks like it was created with watercolors, and perhaps it was. They really do a fresh take on old concepts, still staying true to the essence of the card. Okay. It doesn't completely go off grid or off the map in terms of depictions. No, no, no. It's just a very fresh energy, a way to present an old card. I like it for that reason. It's lovely. I do not use it on camera very much for very simple reasons. It's very papery, which means it's prone to bending. And once a card bends to the point of creasing, that card effectively becomes useless in the shuffle because it will constantly reappear in the same place in the deck over and over again. And that's a big no-no for me, especially as someone who is a rapid shuffler with high pressure shuffling, okay? That's, that's just my shuffling method, guys, you know? Um, I value speed and a deck that can hold up to continuous pressure, and this deck is not so good for that. Like I said, it's 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 very thin paper, and um, it does not snap back well. It doesn't. Um, unfortunately, like I said, it's very prone to creasing, and even touching it, I can see little dents on the surface where my nails are, and... <laughs> 
um, tarot decks should not be that impressionable, even with nail pressure. That's um, it's going to be one of those that are just a couple of creases. You'll end up having to replace it once you see that those same cards that are creased don't move or shuffle correctly, and then also they affect the surrounding cards um, as well from being appropriately shuffled in the deck. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of it, and I don't use it too often, which is a shame because it shows up so brilliantly on camera. Um, you know, I wish I could use it more, but I know me, I know my method, I know my style. And uh, if I keep using it at the rate I say the gold foil, well, <laughs> it's, it's not going to go very well. And I barely use this deck. Do you see how off color the sides are? This was pure white when I got it. I barely use it. When I tell you this is thin paper with very thin coating to protect it, that's what that means. It's not an exaggeration. Uh, you can already see the discoloration here. Okay. Otherwise, you know, guys, if you don't use your decks that often, invest in this one for yourself. I mean, it's beautiful. Moving on to Ask Yourself Tarot. I highly recommend this deck if you are a beginner. If you are just learning, these cards literally have built into it memory prompts um, in case you forget a meaning or what it is perhaps you should be concentrating on. Uh, the deck itself is also really good for you as a beginner to establish your own sense of pressure point and how you shuffle because it's a bit of a challenge. Let me show you why. Oh, um, before we get into it, I will say that there's a bit of a design foible <laughs> to this one. So the bottom of the deck actually comes out the bottom like this, so if it's standing up and you go to pick it up, say like so, it's just going to fall out your hand. And that's, no, that's no good. I will say points taken away from that. <laughs> I cannot begin to tell you how many times I tried to pick this deck up and then I remembered, oh yes, that silly thing that they did where it falls out if you pick it up. <laughs> okay, now, looking at the deck, first of all, straight away, Gilded Edge. Okay, remember what I told you about those gilded edges. Sometimes it works, and a tarot deck is cut properly, and the edges don't get caught, and there's other times where it isn't. This is one of those times where it was cut properly, and it reinforces the strength of the card. Okay, lovely, rigid, has a really good snapback, but also thicker for that reason. So this is what I'm saying. This is going to be one of those great decks where you can learn to build your hand strength and assess your pressure and speed on top of it, again, being really excellent for beginners. So here we have, say, the Nine of Cups. And at the bottom there it says, what soulmate in your life is bringing you emotional fulfillment? So Nine of Cups, as we talk about, is wish fulfillment based on the premise that you love yourself. So if you forget something like that, you can kind of look at the bottom and get a prompter, right? So again, excellent deck for beginners, All right? Very, very simple illustrations that get to the point, okay? Nice little memory prompts. There you go. I like this one a lot. The only reason I don't use it more on camera is because, well, obviously we're not going to be able to see the bottom print. And uh, the images, mm, they don't stand out as much as I should like. Otherwise, I'd use it a lot more frequently. Okay. Yeah. Highly recommend Ask Yourself. Okay. Great deck. The Golden Tarot here is a beautiful deck, but it is absolutely the definition of fussy artwork, which is why it's not, visually speaking, good for camera either, because there's so much detail in it. As someone who has a background in art, I, I absolutely love it, though, uh, for its artistic detail. So obviously this is going to be more of a personal deck that I would use for myself. Okay. Here we have the deck. And it's actually not golden like the other ones are, but it does have a golden edge. And remember the rule about those gilded or golden edges, guys. If it's a clean cut, you'll have to break it in to find out. Okay, that means the cards do not catch on each other. All right. Now, as you see here, it can be very intricate. So there's the Five of Wands. And the Five of Wands is a very simple, simple concept. But here you can see it's done in the style of painting, you know, that's Renaissance or rather pre-Renaissance. So it's it can be quite fussy, uh, but it's so beautiful though. 
I mean, you know how much I dislike the Two of Swords, and <laughs> they did that beautifully here. <laughs> Even the Seven of Pentacles, which is probably one of my least favorite cards in tarot, actually looks interesting in this deck. <laughs> There's the good old Knight of Wands there. I really like this for its actual uh, painting-like style detail, you know. Beautiful coating. Excellent coating. So even though this card or this deck is a little dense with that additional coating, it shuffles beautifully. Snapback is great. Uh, it doesn't wear down as fast. Between the coating and the Gilded Edge, it doesn't wear down half as fast as my other cards. Okay, here's the back, very simple. Yeah, but that is the Golden Tarot uh, by Cat Black. Now, this last one is going to be an honorable mention. I do like it, even though I do not get to use it. <laughs> this is the Tarot of Enchanted Dreams. I love this deck. I wish I could use it. And I say that actually with a borderline Five of Cups kind of remorse. I wish I could use it. It is a beautiful deck. Um, you will recognize, of course, the place cards that I use for all 12 signs. Death, the moon, chariot, the star. So when I'm doing everyone's readings, I typically have them set up over at the side of the table so we can see who's who, right? These came from this deck. So let's talk about why I love it, and then also drats, why I can't use it. So many of you will recognize the box style of tarot decks. These are very, very popular. They're actually my least favorite kind of tarot decks. Okay, this one's the exception. We're going to talk about why. The box style Okay, tarot decks, while they look lovely and beautiful and it's like, oh, look at all this, this stuff, I promise you, it's the packaging. I find that with most uh, box sets, they spend more uh, money and effort on creating the box and the accompanying booklet than they do the actual cards. More often than not, I find the cards from the box set to be extremely soft and they do not hold up well to shuffling at all. That has been my experience 99.9% .9 of the time. This is the only one I can honestly say is the exception. So ironically, <laughs> I can't use it. But uh, whenever I see a box set, I have misgivings because typically the cards are your kind of standard size in comparison. Okay, that is the Golden Terror once more, just for size comparison. They're typically that standard size, but they're also very soft, and they don't shuffle well because they have little rigidity. Um, like I said, most of the money goes to the packaging as opposed to the actual deck. This one, they did a beautiful job with the packaging, and it is a lovely tarot book. The illustrations, they took time with it to get the graphics right. You know? I'm not going to say the interpretations are 100% then I'll bang. Um, they're going to be the most basic generic forms of the interpretations, but nevertheless. Okay. No, the reason I can't use this deck, I hate to say it, but I can't believe I'm saying this. It's too darn to pick. I never thought I would meet a deck in my life that was qualified to be too big, but this one's it. <laughs> oh, gosh. You guys, you know me. And if you don't, hi. Welcome. My name's Christine. I'm a little different. So, yeah. Um, you know, I have tried, guys. I have tried so hard. Look at that. I can barely... I can... <sighs> When I have the full deck in my hand, I can't split it and shuffle appropriately. It's, it just, it will, I've tried, I've tried so much. I've tried doing hand grip exercises to extend, you know, unfortunately, I just, I just wish, I just, it's one of those things, honey, I just wish, I just wish with all my heart, if they had just made this deck standard size, I would probably use it exclusively. <laughs> I would probably use this deck exclusively, um, 
I love it so much. It is so beautiful. The colors are so rich, but without being overbearing or what I would call fussy. Uh, and as you will see in the upcoming Aces week, I use the Aces for the baseline because they're so beautiful and bold and easy to see and recognize. You know? Look at that. So rich in color. Beautiful. But unfortunately, with the full deck in my hands, I cannot split it correctly and I cannot shuffle it correctly. I just can't. I tried. I can't believe I was bested <laughs> by a big deck. Sorry. I can't help it, you guys. I can't help it. I still have to be me. I'm a peacock. You gotta let me fly. Uh, it was gonna happen sometime. But yeah, I mean, it has to be one of the best box set I've ever seen in my life. And I can't use the darn thing. <laughs> oh, it breaks my heart. But for those of you, you know, let's say you have longer fingers than myself. And it's not the nails, guys. Typically, I have my nails short. I just happen to be wearing them long this week. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that, honestly. My fingers just aren't long enough. Or, frankly, more to the point, this, this deck is just too darn big. <laughs> Okay, but yeah, I wanted to give this one an honorable mention. I wish I could use it more, but for what it is, I'm still happy to have it as part of my collection, and I still find ways to use it, like I said. Okay, there's that. I hope this little informal tarot deck review was helpful to you about my go-to tarot decks, the ones that you see on camera the most often, why that is, and um, where you can find them, you know, if you're so inclined, if you're so inspired. I made the decision right now to go ahead and make a part two of my most uh, frequently used oracle decks. Uh, I just did a little check-in with myself right now and realized I'm a little more tired than I had expected or anticipated, and that's okay. It's been a full week for me, and I'm still recovering from my bout of pollen flu. <laughs> and I'm doing fine. I'm doing better, but I still need more rest. And, you know, the whole point of extra sassy is indeed that they are extras, and you know, I have a lot of topics to pull from, and I'll be back, okay? I'll be back, but we'll definitely cover oracles and say a part two and move things forward. <laughs> There's so much more to talk about. There's so much more to wish upon. Isn't that just beautiful in this deck, the star? Again, that's the gold foil, holographic. I highly recommend the gold or the antique. They are both beautiful. Even the Eight of Cups looks nice. <laughs> but again, you need to make choices that are correct for you. So hopefully it'll help you wade in on some of those choices. You guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Put in the comments as you see fit. Take care. Be well.